I think we're on. Okay. So I'm just going to say what we're doing. Hi. This yeah. is like an interview um, that we're having with um, academic success. And we're just going to ask them a few questions. Um, and so uh, we have Elizabeth, Maddie, and Heather. So I'm going to go ahead and start. So the first question, which is for Heather, is what is the academic success office and what sorts of things can and should st students come here for? Thank you so much. So hi, everyone. My name is Heather and uh, I am a learning strategist at Academic Success. Uh, super happy to be here and talk to you a little bit about our services. Um, so Academic Success it really offers students uh, support in making their learning better is what we typically say. Uh, we help support students to be the best that they can be um, by offering both individualized kind of evidence based coaching on their skill development. So some examples of things we might help you with might be time management, uh, prioritization, motivation, uh, test and exam prep, um, note taking, reading strategies, and above all, how to manage stress. So there's a lot of stuff we can support you with, just to name a few there. Um, and a list of all our resources and services are found on our Academic Success website. This is all through CLNX uh, that you can access this. Um, and uh, not only will you find programming there and these one on one appointments uh, with learning strategists, but you'll also find a really great way to build community, meet other peers, meet other students and build connections, which we know is so important right now. Uh, we have things like online study hubs and theme discussions uh, to bring students together, have conversations, work together, especially right now in an online environment that can be really, really helpful. So that's a little bit about what we do at Academic Success. Thank you so much. Um, so the next question is, do you have a service provided that you feel not many students know about? So something that like we need like more awareness on and like things students know that they can come to you guys for. Yeah, so absolutely. And, and again, we have a lot of services. So I think, you know, sometimes it's hard to know where everything is, what everything is, uh, especially as a new college student, you can go through the new college registrar's office um, to get support and connect with an, a learning strategist, as I had mentioned, for a one on one appointment. Um, but everything else is on CLNX. And so you can find our workshops there and, and many other services. One thing I wanted to share that a lot of students may not know about um, is our academic peer mentorship program. So we actually have trained academic peer mentors uh, to help students stay accountable. Um, and some, some ways they can do that is they can help them make a study plan, a uh, creative supportive routine, a uh, supportive schedule for their studying. Um, and again, sitting even down and practice reading university texts or learning how to you know, work on a project one step at a time. All of these services are available through the peers. Um, and we have one of them with us today who you'll meet shortly, uh, Maddie. So um, the process can be really helpful of going on CLNX, meet with a learning strategist, and then you might even want to have like a, uh, a follow up session with one of our academic peer mentors um, to support you in, in addition with your individual learning um, and working together to really execute a plan um, and put it into motion uh, one on one after you've met with a learning strategist. So that can be a really cool process to actually work with both of us, uh, learning strategists and mentors. Um, our group of mentors are very diverse, so we have various levels of their education ranging from undergraduate to PhD, so whatever you feel would suit you, um, as well as uh, various programs that they're a part of. So you can find all of their bios on the Academic Success website um, under uh, Academic Mentor Appointments, and that's where you can actually find all of our mentors, who they are, little bios about them, and then just book an appointment with them on CLNX. So again, something we just want to drive more attention to, they're there for you and great ways to again meet fellow students as an additional support. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Um, so the third question is for Elizabeth. And so how can students take advantage of these resources that Heather just talked about and any more that you know um, early going on into next semester, do you think? Hi, um, well, thank you so much for uh, introducing um, all of this and the resources. Um, so I'm Elizabeth, I am the new, new college learning strategist on location. 
And um, as Heather mentioned, there are so many resources that are available for students to take advantage of. And I feel like going into uh, this semester, we are going to be offering a series of workshops that will be specific to New College and that will be launching early February. So we'll have more information on those coming soon and that will um, invite New College students to participate. And um, there is also so many uh, workshops that are offered at Academic Success, and we encourage students to explore the workshops and programs uh, on the CLNX website. And um, I'm happy to share my screen if that is helpful, maybe because it's a recording. So, yeah, I am going to I am going to actually do this by um, I'm trying to do it in a very flawless way, but I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, can everyone see my screen? I guess. Yeah. Okay. So this is the official um, website for academic success. It's student life at sorry, studentlife.utoronto.ca um, slash department slash academic success. And here is where you can scroll with us and see the various programs that academic success offers. Um, there's a January Reboot Start Fresh uh, program that we'll probably talk about as well. There's the study hubs, um, there's workshop series, and there's other services where you could um, either book a, a, a workshop um, or you could chat with academic mentors and appointments. So anyway, this uh, website is really, really uh, wonderful in um, sharing all of the great resources and I'm going to stop presenting. Okay, and it's still recording. So that's great. Um, and yeah, so I would just say because there's so many different types of uh, resources available, just to start getting ahead and seeing what fits your, um, like fits your taste, I guess, or um, seeing what's available for uh, both first year students or upper year students or really grad students, whomever can can participate. And then in addition, we have our mentorship, sorry, a mentor program um, that uh, is also available through CLNX via appointment. So that's also on the website. So I'll leave it at that. Thank you. That sounds really good. Um, another question for you is how can a student access the services you provide under the new COVID guidelines? Yeah. So because of COVID, um, all of our services are online, including workshops, themed discussions, and appointments. And mm -hmm. so to schedule an appointment, um, you could either go through the New College Registrar's Office, or, or you could email me directly. Um, I'm sure on, on CLNX, you could also book uh, appointments as well. And because it's all virtual, we do use Zoom and Microsoft Teams to connect with U of C students. Um, for these video calls, uh, we do encourage students to use the video function if they are comfortable and if they feel safe, um, just so we could best support uh, because again, it's a, it's a very different time right now. So we wanna make sure we're engaging with the whole person in front of us. Um, and you could also take our asynchronous course on the best learning habits, which is found also on the same website I shared. So studentlife at utoronto.ca and that's through CLNX. Perfect, thank you so much. And so now I have a question for all three of you, but we can start with Maddie. So Maddie, in a world where things have been shifted online, what's a tip you have regarding working and being efficient? That's a, that's a great question. Um, also, hi everyone, my name's Maddie. I'm one of the peer mentors at um, Academic Success and uh, very happy to be here. So a tip I think I would have for working online is I think it can be, it can be difficult to kind of have a schedule or schedule your time. So um, something that I've done is sort of like uh, figured out kind of what I like to do best or what time of day I work the best and um, trying to stick to that so if you like waking up early in the morning and doing a reading or two then um, you can try that out or if you work better at night that's something to uh, to consider um, so yeah I would say I would say definitely trying just trying out different like schedules and don't be afraid if something doesn't work like this is a totally new situation for all of us so so it's it's a real learning experience and I think being kind to yourself but also experimenting with different things is is one tip that uh, that I would give. Thank you so much. Heather, do you want to go for an advice? Yeah, thing sure. That you have? Yeah, I can give a tip. Um, 
obviously online learning is is so new to many of us right and i think uh going through last year we all got a taste for what it looks like to also learn some really great new skill sets uh in the digital space and, and just working through our day-to-day -day activities but online and i think one thing that i advise students a lot to do um is to really a little bit about what maddie was saying but get an idea of how self-management can support you? How can you take care of your schedule even more with more intention than you might have before? Because now the onus is way more on you, um, especially if you got asynchronous classes and you have to decide when you're going to watch those. So having a schedule daily, weekly, and monthly, um, even starting right now, it's January, it's a perfect time uh, to create uh, a full semester schedule from now till the end, looking at all of the things on your syllabi that you you need to map out when they're due, what's their kind of chunk percentage of weight, and then what are all the steps that you need to get there. So not just mapping out the last thing, but the things that need to happen in advance to complete that task. So important to keep you on track and also to celebrate those little wins as you go along, you know, and allow yourself uh, again, especially with online, you're going to be in front of a screen a lot of the time. Allow yourself those those moments to get outside. I call them self-care non-negotiables <laughs> um, because we don't always call self-care a non-negotiable. It's like a nice to have, but the truth is taking care of your mental health and your body, your physical peace uh, is so important in order to thrive as a student. So map those out too. get them into your schedule walks outside if you're able or you know even having um, the ability to have time to cook or spend time um, connecting with family and friends it's so important so uh, get those in there as well so that you have a balance um, as a holistic learner and you're not just in your mind and in the digital space all the time which can really cause burnout True. thank you you're welcome Elizabeth? Yeah, so I think that Maddie and Heather both highlighted amazing uh, tips. Um, I think one of the tips that I'm happy to share is I think that the online space, there's so much happening and sometimes we feel connected, but also disconnected at the same time. So I think I would encourage students to, um, you know, seek out any supports that you know, they might need. Um, so it could be, you know, trying to find a connection in your course and maybe you browse through the discussion board and see what other people have written and um, engage in different um, study groups. So I know academic success has study hubs. I know through arts and science, you could go through the registered uh, study groups. So uh, just having some sort of connection might be really great. And if you're feeling like there's some high level um, resources or support that you require, um, I know that new college along with the arts and science and depending on what program you're affiliated with there are so many supports that are available and you know during this time um, things are really accessible to virtually so I would just encourage to you know do a little self check in see what's going on if there is a connection that you need with someone to help you through that's great but if there is resources that you feel like you want to explore we really encourage you to do that as well so Lots, uh, yeah, lots of there, lots of things there to support students. Thank you. That sounds really good. Um, and so now these are like the last few questions. So thank you guys so much for the past six. Your answers have been great. Um, so Maddie, what new learning skills are you most proud of um, developing now that we're learning online? Um, I think uh, two things kind of come to mind. One is. Um, I think I've, I've developed my understanding of what it means to listen. And also, um, I think I've gotten a deeper understanding of what accessible learning means and looks like um, and the importance of advocating for it both in person and online. So in terms of listening, um, I, I've thought a lot about what it means to listen actively, but also of the different ways that we can listen to each other on online platforms. So, you know, there's the there's the chat function. Um, there's also taking the time to really listen listen to what others are saying or communicating. And then I think that there's like with that, there's the added element of how on Zoom or Teams or whatever platform we're using, we can't really talk over each other like we sometimes do in uh, in in-person conversations. Um, and then I so I really think that 
like learning and communicating can mean many, many things. And it's important to, to make our communication as open and, and accessible as possible. So then in terms of accessibility, you know, I think that this means being aware of people's comforts, learning online and speaking online um, and, and also understanding that, you know, sometimes people can't attend um, online spaces or online classes because they have different commitments or care commitments. Um, and I think also what I've been seeing a lot online and what, what I um, what I think is really important and, um, and, and hope to implement more in the future is kind of accessible features online, like, um, for example, uh, closed caption or t sign language interpretation or even recorded lectures and how, you know, you can sort of pause those and, and things like that. So anyway, I, I, I think that, you know, it's, it's, it's wonderful to see the kind of learning process go in, in terms of what we're doing online and seeing how it's evolved. And, you know, I, I think it's really powerful that you know even in these very very difficult circumstances we still learn we still teach we're still together we're still communicating and that's really um, powerful and that's something that I've learned and that I'm going to take in um, in not only in, in the rest of my studies but 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 beyond sounds good that's that's really good I can definitely relate to some of those as well yeah with the closed captions, like I had to do that for a video once and like that was so important because Elizabeth was like, closed captions. I was like, oh, true. <laughs> so yeah. Um, the second question is, what is your funniest online learning moment? Um, that's a really good question. And I I like, it was, it was, it's, it's, it's kind of like, it's kind of tricky to think like, I mean, like there's for sure the first, like the kind of age old now you're on mute. And like, I've done that so many times and every time it's funny. Um, but, uh, but one of my funniest, uh, learning moments online was with one of my, one of my cats actually. So I have two cats and one is her name's Lucy and she's very vocal. She likes to talk a lot and she really lets you know, like when, when she wants something. So one day, uh, this is a few months ago I was on zoom with a couple with a professor and some classmates and colleagues and we were just talking about a project and so my Lu my cat Lucy walks in and she's meowing all over the place and you know I'm sure everybody could hear her but then she jumps up onto the um onto the bench she like wants to crawl into my lap and when she did she 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 turned and looks like almost directly right at the camera and she just lets out this very very loud meow like and she's just staring right <laughs> like right at the camera she was just like meow and it was so loud and I think it startled everybody but it was also really funny and anyway it just like like I'm 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 very grateful that I get to learn and and work with my with my fur babies like it's it's <laughs> they're so close to me and that's been really comforting a lot so it's been very nice and at times very funny Thank you. That's so cute. Where is she now? Where's the cat? <laughs> Lu Lucy is in um, the bathroom. Uh, she that's oh. like her spot. She, she has. We have this orange rug. She loves it. She's always there. But I have another another cat beside me whose name is Martin. Do you want me to show? I can. <laughs> so this is Martin. He's very fluffy. Oh, oh my <laughs> adorable. And I, 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 Martin was uh, just kind of having a nap, so he's a little. He's probably a little bit mad at me. <laughs> but this is Martin. So I'll, I'll put him oh, back for stuff. But uh, yeah, those are my those are my cats. <laughs> that was such a great story. Thank yeah. you for sharing. So Thank you for sharing. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you. Um, but I feel like that's all the questions that we have for you guys. Does anyone want to add anything else? I just wanted to say to everyone, you know, feel free to connect with us. Um, sometimes it can be intimidating to reach out, especially if you need support. But know that we're here to support you any step of the way, um, any part of the journey you're on. Um, it's never too late or too soon to connect with us. So we're here to support you. Thank you guys so much. This has been so helpful. Um, and I think we've come to the end. So thank you for watching if you're watching. But yeah, bye. <laughs> Thanks bye. everyone. Thank bye. You.